Good evening, I'm Kate Mahoney from the Naomi Ruth Cohen Institute for Mental Health Education at the Chicago School of Professional Psychology. I'm really delighted tonight that we have Amy Kelly with us, who is the founder of a really exciting nonprofit organization called Take Your Place. And Amy, can you tell us a little bit about well, what Take Your Place does and um, and why you founded it. I want to tell you, we chose Take Your Place for tonight's show because it's March and March is Women's History Month. Mm -hmm. And it is, while it's important to reflect on the amazing accomplishments of women in our history, we're starting to think about women moving forward and how the young women of today are going to be making history in the future. So maybe you could tell me a little bit about what prompted you to start Take Your Place. Okay, so Take Your Place is a nonprofit organization that provides STEM curriculum, and STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. So we provide STEM curriculum to underrepresented girls ages 6 through 12. And there are lots of organizations that do this type of thing, but we concentrate on younger girls. Most organizations concentrate on girls that are in middle school or in high school, but we concentrate on girls in the elementary age. And what prompted me to found Take Your Place was my daughter. Um, when I first thought of the idea for Take Your Place, I had a daughter who was in first grade. And we live on the south side of Chicago, and we were looking for a robotic summer camp for her. And everything that fit what we were looking for was very far away, over 20 miles, and cost wow. a lot of money. It was $1,000 for a week or $1,200 for a week. And it would even be sometimes those programs were a half a day. And so um, we thought, okay, we can't do this. And so I said to my husband, you know what? I think I'm just going to try to do something with my daughter and her friends. And so contacted um, some people, found some curriculum, and we did a robotic STEM program. And we went to different, it was five little girls, her friends and their parents, and we would meet in the library every couple of weeks and we would build robots and code them. And the girls loved it. It they, sounds so exciting. Yeah, they were so happy and I was so happy. I was in this happy place that I really enjoyed to see my daughter um, learn in a manner that was different from just reading a book and then memorizing what you read and regurgitating it. To see the hands-on learning was exciting for me. And because it made me so happy, I thought we should try this because girls should have this opportunity. They should have this availability. And girls this age can do it. And so that's what prompted me to say, let's found this organization. So you're harnessing the interest, curiosity, and power of young women and helping by providing services closer in their community. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like really interactive. So not, um, I know that you're in, in your day life, right? That you're, yes. <laughs> uh, you teach math at the college level. Mm -hmm. But here it sounds like you do very interactive, creative programming, letting young women um, really do hands-on work and get really excited about science, technology, engineering, and math, um, which is really exciting and that you're making it accessible in a variety of neighborhoods. Yes, and so we wanted to concentrate in areas where um, this type of curriculum wasn't offered for girls that are underrepresented and women are <coughs> under, bless me. you, women are underrepresented in this area, in the STEM fields anyway, but then there's often a time where some girls just don't have the exposure because the programs aren't available to them in their communities. And that's the need that we really wanted to address. And so and what would you see as the connection between um, providing these programs to young women and the self-esteem that happens for girls? Because for us, we focus a lot on issues about mental health, self-development, self-esteem. And can you kind of help make that connection? So the connection is that oftentimes, like I said, programs concentrate um, middle school years, high school years. And sometimes if girls haven't had the exposure, or even if they have had the exposure, if they're not comfortable, if they're not in an environment where they feel safe, um, then they don't pursue it. They feel They may feel as though, oh, I don't have cool enough shoes as this other kid, or 
I don't go to the other activities that they go to and I don't fit in and so I'm not as interested in participating. And so when they're in environments with their peers where they feel comfortable, where they can say, oh yeah, I've been to that park also, or I've participated in these things, or I have a friend at your school, then the girls feel more comfortable in just being themselves and creating. And part of the scientific process is failure. And so oftentimes it's really hard to fail in an environment where you don't feel comfortable. So if you're trying an experiment, you're really afraid for it to go wrong if you're in an environment where you already don't feel comfortable. And so we want girls, especially at a young age, to start feeling comfortable, to start feeling as though I can do this, this is something I'm interested in, why shouldn't I do this? We want them to feel that way. And if we don't get them to have that comfort level, we lose them. We lose their interest. And by the time they're in middle school, they have no desires to do the programs. Sure. And one of the things I love that you were talking about is you're really building community, right? So you might have young women who go to different either neighborhood schools or mm -hmm. magnet schools or but that they might come together and be learning together. And in that, they're also building their self-confidence because they're getting to know people from a variety of environments. Yes, and so we have girls who, they may have gone to dance class together, but they go to different schools. And then we have girls who came in last summer to one of our programs, and they didn't really know anyone. But because the girls who had relationships already were so welcoming and comfortable and that they've participated in the past, they welcomed new girls in. And it made the difference. It made the new girls feel like in this scientific process, I can fail, no one's going to laugh at me, no one's going to make fun of me, right. but I'm going to be okay because it's part of the process and I'll be able to try again. I think one thing that our program really promotes and one thing that I really promote is camaraderie among young ladies mm -hmm. and that um, for you to be healthy and successful, you need to be able to celebrate other people who are having successes. Right. So we went on a field trip last year. We went to one of those wind tunnels where you fly around and simulate mm -hmm. that you're flying in the air. Mm -hmm. And we had about five girls who were terrified. And the um, one of the managers of the establishment told us, this is what we want to see because our girls were cheering so hard for the girls that were afraid that the walls were shaking. And wow. he's like, this is what we want to see. We love seeing this camaraderie. We love seeing building each other up so that they're not afraid. And it was a STEM lesson, um, very hands-on <laughs> STEM yeah. lesson, but it was a STEM lesson and where they had to support each other. And so that's something that our program really promotes is that we support each other. We understand that we all make mistakes and failure and we get back up and we try again because that's part of the scientific process. It's it sounds like such a fabulous program. Thank you. Really exciting. When I think about it, and I'm sure I'm dating myself, but in my high school, we had not a single woman in the math or science department. And so just thinking about having amazing women like you, um, engaging the minds of young women, and helping them see that they have so many options ahead of them. Yes, and um, we want them to see um, that you can do this. Um, and so if they're comfortable in a STEM environment at six, seven, eight years old, when they get to college or university level where they may not have as many women around, but hopefully by the time they get there, um, that number would have increased. Shifted, yes. yes, but um, we're hoping that their comfort level that they've established as a young girl will go with them so that they're not saying, you know what, I don't like this anymore because it doesn't seem cool or there aren't a lot of girls in the program anymore so I don't want to do it. And research is showing that oftentimes that happens, that girls need to see other women. They need to see female professors. They need to see female grad assistants. They need to see people who look like them in the environment that they're learning in at all levels so they can feel some level of comfort and go to someone for mentorship. And you're focusing on young women and also young women of color, correct? So that's yes. really trying to make sure that we are shifting the conversation, opening doors and windows, um, making yes. sure that people feel like there's lots of, of opportunity. Yes. And sadly, one of the things I feel like I still sometimes hear from some of the teenage women that I've worked with is that they feel like as young women, it's not 
cool to be smart sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so are you trying to shift that? Well, we're shifting that thinking by saying you all have your special talents and nobody's perfect at anything. Like by day I teach math and by the rest of the day I um, work on Take Your Place. But as far as, you know, am, am I going to be a perfect writer? No. And so we tell all of our girls, you have your strengths. Well, we had some girls last summer who were really strong in doing our 3D printing activities. We had other girls who were really strong in our forensic science activities. We had some girls who could solve, you know, these puzzles that we were working on for architecture. They could do it in a flash. And we had other girls who couldn't, but every Everybody has their strengths and you build upon that you don't feel as though oh I'm not as smart as someone you just know that you have your strengths and that you're building your others to make you successful and so you're giving young women the opportunity to explore a variety of interests so that they can figure out their strengths and also what excites them right yes not only what they're good at but what they find interesting what helps them think about oh moving from here I'd like to go here and there yes um, we had a um, we just did an event um, that we were sponsored by the Museum of Science and Industry and it was um, the Black Creativity Career Expo and so they had lots of minorities in STEM um, and they had their businesses there and they had hands-on activities and that one of the stipulations was that the girls came with their parents and it was because they wanted their parents to see what did they get excited about. There's mm -hmm. so many different things in STEM that you could get excited about. Um, one young lady got really excited about how do you code the kiosks for McDonald's. Um, and so oh. she was very excited about that they have these kiosks, but how are they coding them based on the old menu? And then there was another young lady who was extremely excited about the brain. And she stood at this table that had a brain in a jar and she stood there for over an hour talking to all of the students who were running the table, understanding what they did, understanding the paths that they took to get to the educational path that they were on now at the university level. And so their parents got to see my daughter isn't necessarily interested in coding. She's interested in the brain or my daughter isn't interested in the brain. She's interested in veterinary science. And so they got to really see. And once you learn that as a parent, then you can really help that child pursue that goal by putting them in programs that they're truly interested in. So it sounds like you've already built quite a few partnerships with organizations and maybe schools. Do you want to talk um, a little bit about Not as that? many as we'd like. We definitely are willing to continue to build more. Um, we have been working with the Museum of Science and Industry where we have been visiting them a lot. They're always changing their exhibits and so just recently they did sponsor one of our events to bring the girls there which was fantastic and we're hoping we can work with them mm -hmm. um, more. We have reached out to um, local universities. One is having a, a brain festival in May wow. and so we're hoping that we can collaborate with them to bring about 20 girls to that event and um, most recently we just partnered with Daily College and so we will be hosting we hosted an event there a free event that we hosted there on March 1st which was ending um, engineering month and beginning women's history month oh what and a perfect nexus it, yeah it was and so it was our girls night out in engineering and so we had women in STEM who specialized in engineering come and speak to our girls speak about what they wanted to be when they grew up speak about how did they end up in the field of engineering and so we were able to do that and collaborate collaboration with Daily College and it was a great event. The girls got to do a hands-on activity and it's always a great day when you can have pizza for dinner. So. Absolutely and the City Colleges have so many wonderful programs to offer too. They're great partners as well. Yes. I'm going to flash so our viewers can see a little bit about how they can um, how they can connect to your organization, your phone number, your website and email address. Okay. Um, and while, while that's up on the screen because it also makes me think, not only my parents want to know but to enroll their daughters, but as you were just mentioning, it sounds like you're open to new partnerships. So there might be some viewers who are with organizations where they are getting excited about what they're hearing from you and think about 
they might want to reach out to think about collaboration? I would hope so. One thing that we really are focusing on um, the 2018-2019 year is as our girls age out of our program, since we focus on ages 6 through 12, we would really like to have a program that we could recommend, if not programs to recommend, for them to transition into. Programs that we could recommend that they do weekend workshops with, programs that we could recommend that they do summer camps with or summer in internships or camp counselors, something that they could transition to that keeps up that excitement because if we can gather the excitement with young girls, we want to be able to keep it up as they get older. So we are definitely open to more collaborations. That sounds exciting. So all you potential partners out there, Amy's full of uh, collaborative spirit, which is great. Um, and then I did want to check in. Some of the programs you offer are free, right? So yes. that even families who might feel like that they don't have a lot of resources for extra enrichment for their um, for their children that they might still find ways to be able to really benefit from some of what you're doing and take your place. Yes, so all of our weekend workshops are free. Um, we offer free transportation and we often on our weekend workshops go on field trips. And so we'll take the girls to MSI, we'll take them to visit a maker lab, things like that. And we'll okay, provide- Okay, so MSI is Museum of Science and Industry, yes, right? Yes, it is. MSI okay. is the Museum of Science and Industry. We'll visit a maker lab and in maker labs, you can they can be very basic, they can be very extensive um, and so we've gone to maker labs where the girls have been able to work on 3d printers and laser cutters and make gifts for their families and those events that we host are free and even our events that um, may have some type of cost to them we offer you know scholarships we want right. to be able to make everything to inclusive. yes to be inclusive to everyone so that that was the reason that I founded this organization was that we wanted people to feel as though I can go to this this is uh -huh. something that is available to me and I don't feel like I'm left out because of my gender because of my nationality or because of my economic status that's fabulous. So I do want to, um, in the spirit of inclusivity, I want to uh, go over some terminology. So maker labs, right, mm -hmm. are places where you make things. Yes, and you can make <clears throat> things with nails, wood, paper, glass. Um, people think of maker labs and oftentimes they think of, oh, 3D printers. But there are so many other things you can do there. You can use... Um, different mini computers and you can build video games you can sew um, you can build roller coasters with building bricks so there are so many things you can do in a maker lab but it inspires creativity it inspires stem thought processes which people think oh stem is the big terminology these days but most of what you do requires some stem activity at some point or another and so when your kid is building with building blocks when your kid is making a laser tube out of paper towel holders they are using engineering architecture mathematics um, to do those things when mom is cooking in the kitchen and she's making up a roux or a sauce she's using chemistry because the things they have to meld together so you know stem is a big terminology but maker labs are the big thing because they're the creative spaces now that will go high tech to low tech and kids can they can use them in whichever capacity that they're at at the time I appreciate it. I feel like part of my job is to be a good translator Thank so you. maker labs do that sometimes people hear a similar expression I think of a DIY right or do yes, it yourself do it yourself which some, sometimes are similar to make it labs yes right um, maker labs a DIY is usually they're thought of as arts and craft projects but people are doing DIYs where I met um, a student the other day where she was making her own computer um, out of things that she had found and things that she had ordered and resources that people have provided for her but she was doing it herself wow wow um, and then STEM again, we talked about it earlier, but again, it's science, technology, engineering, and math. Yes. And I think everybody who has a child in school knows that terminology well. But for those of us who've been out of school for a while or might not have young children, um, wanted to make sure that we're not using quick phrases that don't make sense to everyone. Um, and so um, it's really sort of exciting to hear your spirit of collaboration about creating more partnerships thinking about that next step. So you, your programs with young women ages 6 to 12, yes. really you're getting young women off to a great start. Early on capturing in the, the time when 
people's minds are so can be so open and mm -hmm. creative and allowing young women at a very early age to get excited about this, but that you are looking for partnerships and ways to help young women on the next phases of their journey, whether in the more in the middle school or high school levels. Yes. So and as, as, my, as I've grown um, as an individual, <clears throat> I've seen women and girls go from being, you know, nine years old to I've mentored girls up into their 30s. And in saying that, you want that transition to be rather seamless if you can find something in the spirit of the girl that she really enjoys. You don't want it to be that the opportunities are not available because of lack of exposure or lack of knowledge or just not knowing what next steps to take. And so that's why we want our girls who are transitioning out of our program because of age for us to be able to say, this is a next step you can take, or here are three or four options that you can take so that these things are available to you. Yeah, which is really exciting. Again, I'm going to put the contact information up so people can see more how to reach out to your organization um, and really find ways that if they want to, they can think through more about um, either enrolling their daughter or learning more about just the exciting work that you're doing. Um, and really figuring out ways that people can plug in and support this innovation. I'm really excited again that what you're doing is you're giving young women more opportunities not only to learn um, and express their creativity and find some of their future paths, but to develop self-confidence, self-esteem, and a community. Um, and that you're really creating very supportive environments and that seems very exciting too. So that there's ways that people can um, benefits. So my sense is, as you've been talking, Amy, is even if there was a, a girl, say maybe six, seven, or eight, the first time her parents say, gee, would you be interested in one of these programs? And maybe she says, I'm not sure. That you might encourage parents to encourage their daughter to try it because what she might get out of it is a new friend. Even if, even if she doesn't find that STEM is her thing, um, that she might decide that she gets to meet young women that it's nice to know and it might be in her school or might be in her school in the future. Yes, um, um, one thing that uh, my girls really seem to know about Miss Amy is that it's uh, one of our major programs occurs in the summer and I feel like summertime in Chicago, if you don't get your play in, you're going to miss it because <laughs> it's so short summertime in Chicago. Okay. So while we're doing STEM, um, we are playing also. And so I believe that you learn, you learn, you work hard, but that you also got to have a lot of fun mm -hmm. because you're a kid and you only get that time once. And so last year, one of our big things, at, a, at our we had a STEM camp, and one of our big things was dodgeball. The girls lived for dodgeball and they played relentlessly and yeah. <laughs> they had a lot of fun and so I do believe with um, collaborations as we expand our program one of my big questions always is do you have an area where our girls can play because while we want them to be able to do technology and we want them to build as engineers and architects they're six seven and eight or six through twelve and they still want to play and we don't want that taken away in the summer in a time where kids think of fun. So we try to collaborate those together. And we talk about how dodgeball and physics and that goes into it, but we still play. That's fabulous. Well, especially because, again, I could see, um, maybe even especially some of the older girls feel like, hey, I don't want more school in the mm -hmm. summer. I've been looking <laughs> for a break. I want to play dodgeball. I want to do things. And so that sounds like, again, you've been really focusing on what are the developmental needs of young women and yes. your giving them opportunities to learn new things, but also, again, to have fun, to have some physical activity, to be part of a team uh, sport, and to be able to run around, burn off some of that energy that um, that people want to get, you know, be that able they to have in the, in the summer. Yes. yes. And then another thing, because I know it's focusing on family, is that we have a culminating event after our programs and um, in the summer, and we invite family in so they can come see what their kids have been working on. And to see the smiles on their faces when their parents see the things that they've created mm -hmm. is everything. They are so excited and so proud and they work so hard to plan because they plan the day to plan that day and they are excited. So family really drives um, kids success in some of the areas that are what's really important to them. Well, and that's fabulous too, because I think for parents, sometimes again, we have some parents who are really smart people who 
love their children and want their children to have the best, but may not feel so prepared to guide um, their daughters or their sons in certain areas that maybe weren't their strengths when they were younger. So science, technology, math, maybe it's someone instead who was really a great, was a great writer or loves mm -hmm. reading or history. Um, and so this is a great opportunity for enrichment and that parents don't have to be the experts in everything. Exactly. That what you're doing is you're providing this opportunity and parents can still feel involved. And certainly it sounds like that uh, culminating program at the end of the summer is a time for parents to feel proud but also, again, to see what, what really lights up their daughters' minds and, and spirits so that they can continue to kindle that excitement and enthusiasm. Yes, I Great. agree. Well, Amy, this time went by so quickly. It did. I can't thank you enough for being here today. Thank you for I'm having me. I'm so excited about your organization, and I'm sure our viewers are happy to have learned about it. Thank you so much.